Yeah, my name is Christian. Uh, I'm working for Red Hat um, since about like three years, working on OpenStack Swift for more than four years actually now. And um, yeah. Yeah, my name is um, Thiago da Silva. I work on OpenStack Swift also, and I've been working at Red Hat since uh, 2013. Um, I have been working on Swift for about two, two to three years, um, and this is what we keep doing: just working upstream yeah. with the community, um, contributing there. And we have there's there's a lot of work going on. Um, in Okata, we focused a lot on making improvements to 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 the source code. Um, it was a shorter release, um, so we continue doing work that is long-term, uh, new features that we are working on, and we did a lot of focus also on just improving uh, features that are already there today. Uh, for example, erasurability. Um, we also working on some new features that got started, uh, and we're kind of building on what we have already done, and uh, trying to add on to them. So, Christian has been doing a lot of work on triple O integration. Yeah. So one part that we are actively working on is better integration for Swift within other projects. Um, that's both a community thing within the more global um, OpenStack community, but it's uh, also important to make it easier to use for operators uh, to actually deploy Swift, to run Swift at scale. Um, when you're running Swift, it's normally at larger scales. Um, you typically want to start with pet well. Many people are running at a petabyte scale, right? So you have a lot of nodes that you need to orchestrate about, and um, it's important uh, that operators have the right tools uh, to get the work jo job done, actually. So within Triple O, um, we were looking how we can improve the existing integration with Swift, and this is actually a long-term plan, so we did quite a few improvements within the last release especially uh, tuning settings. Um, we saw some performance well, performance settings that were not optimal, let's call it like that. Um, and they were, they came up uh, basically because Swift is used um, more globally now within the triple O uh, deployments. Uh, for example, Silometers started using Swift. And um, apart from that, we also improved uh, tools that are important when you upscale deployments, for example, uh, to remove steps that are that were required to do them manually before, uh, they are now it's automating not that process, automated, yeah. and um, yeah, that's part of a more global um, effort to to improve things. And this will continue within the next few releases, probably. Um, so what we are looking into is even building clusters and upscaling clusters to automate even more steps. For example, when you uh, add more nodes uh, with more disks to automatically um, include them within the Swift deployment. Right. It's all about improving usability for the operator, trying to make things as easy as possible for operators to deploy clusters and manage clusters, right? As they need to scale them out, uh, change failed devices, change failed nodes, uh, trying to improve that usability for them. Uh, some other work that we've done or continue to work on um, is for example, encryption, where in the Newton release that was uh, introduced in Swift, um, and now we started to work to actually add uh, integration with Barbican, uh, so we can get the root key uh, from Barbican and uh, encrypt the data in Swift that way. Uh, so that's not something that was there today, but it's, it's being worked on uh, in the community. Um, the other work that we're doing, again, in building on uh, a foundation that was already there in Swift uh, is um, deploying um, uh, what we call global erasure coding. So today you have an erasure coded uh, storage policy, but that has to um, be deployed for, to only one data center. Uh, we don't have the support to um, have a erasure coded policy that spans multiple data centers. That's what we're working on. We want to uh, have that available in the next release. And this is all about uh, basically operators requests. Um, operators running at scale, um, running large clusters across the distributed across the globe, and um, these requests are basically just like, okay, we want this, we need this, 
um, the community is actively working on um, on a long-term plan. Uh, another uh, part that we actively worked on during the last release, which is not yet merged, but um, it will be probably merged well, maybe this week already, um, is to increase partition power. So Swift uh, distributes data across many disks, and um, when you set up clusters first time, you need to set a special parameter. And until now, it was fixed. Um, so when you upscale cluster to to that very large size, let's say 100 times the size that you started with, um, then you want to increase the setting. And um, this new patch, which is really a long-term effort as well, we started working on that or designing this uh, this feature like one and a half years ago, maybe two years ago already, um, is now ready to merge and uh, it's a huge patch. Um, but uh, sometimes these features take a long time uh, because actually Swift is in storage system. So if you break things, it's not just like a VM that stops working and that you fix, right? Um, we want to ensure that we never lose data from our uh, users, from our customers. So it's uh, really important to, to get things right the first time mm -hmm. and uh, to avoid like stuff that breaks yeah. things. I think some of the exciting stuff that's really coming up too is um, work that the community as a whole is doing um, with involvement from a lot of different companies um, revolves around uh, data tiering. So operators uh, you know, set up a storage policy, their users start putting a lot of data into them, uh, typically triple replicated, and before you know it, that data is getting cold, and now they would prefer to move that data to a, uh, a colder, cheaper uh, tier, data tier. And that actually uh, is something that we started working on uh, with uh, you know, everybody in the community, really many different companies in the community are involved. Uh, it's really a community effort. Uh, that also has attracted uh, companies like um, uh, IBM and Panasonic with their high latency media and wanting to integrate that and being able to store to even uh, some high latency media uh, 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 devices like tape, for example, or DVDs. Um, and that, that is, I think it's pretty uh, interesting in what's coming ahead in Swift. Um, my take. Uh, a couple releases to get there, but I think you know there's there's strong um, effort in the community to to see that happen. Right. Um, yeah. It's as Tiago already said. It's it's basically about even decreasing the costs even more. Um, so typically, a Swift runs on very cheap hardware. Uh, you don't want to use expensive storage backends uh, on Swift servers. You just use plain SATA disks, for example. And uh, this comes down to okay operators that um, have data that they want to store for long term, like archive data, um, needs to be stored on even cheaper systems. And um, yeah, that's that's really interesting progress. And it's also interesting to see the contributions from these companies because they have a different approach uh, when they look at data, right? Um, Right now, it was more like, okay, this is hot data, data that is uh, accessed very frequently, mm -hmm. um, but these companies are in the business for a long time already. They have Archive customers yeah. um, that uh, request this kind of uh, storage systems, and uh, seeing this integrated into Swift is quite interesting and uh, great to see. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah.